Hey, Loopline here. And a lot of people don't realize that you can use Scrapebox for white hat purposes. In fact, I'd say that you can use it for just as many white hat purposes as you can black hat purposes. One thing you can do is to make a sitemap for your site using Scrapebox in one of a couple different ways. So one way we can do it is we can pull from Google or a search engine uh, site colon and then the domain.com. So if I'm just going to pull scrapebox.com, I just hit start harvesting here and um, make sure this is on custom footprint. And it's going to grab 75 entries. If it's a reputable site that has very many links to it, especially if you've linked your inner pages, then Google probably has them all indexed. So this is probably a good indication of how many is actually there. And I can just go to export and export as HTML and do sitemap and then just upload that HTML file directly to my web server and link to it and I have a sitemap. Another way we can do this is to go with the Scrapebox link extractor and we could even if we didn't even want to scrape from Google at all we don't have to we can just punch in our domain so basically we would just go in fact let's just let's just do this. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all these and get rid of them and leave just scrapebox.com in here. Now you can go ahead and um, let me get this back up here. We could go ahead and import these from scrapebox or import them from a file. So we would just put this in a text file and then import it in here. I'm just going to pull it in from scrapebox and then I would do internal links and you probably want to turn connections down because if you put this at like 100 connections, you're hammering your own site at 100 connections and your server might not like that. So I'm just going to do one connection. It's only one, one site anyways, but you could, you could do a few probably. I mean, do like 15 or maybe 10, depend you know, on your, your server, how good of a server you have. Um, hit start. It's going to read the page. It found 13 links. So I'm going to go ahead and export this as a text file. And I'm just going to stick it in here and say round one and then I'm gonna go ahead and import that right back in and now I've got these now I want to go extract internal links from each one of these and then I'm gonna export that so now I have 122 total links after duplicates remove and I'm just gonna call it round two you could just keep overriding the same file and overwrite that round one if you wanted but uh, import URLs from file round two start Let's like go down through there. And by this point, we probably have uh, the majority of them just because I know that I mean, we're getting into like doing like images and the whole nine yards here. So uh, we probably don't need that much. But um, and so I've wound up with 125. So that's about right. Um, what I could have also done is taken that original 75 that I got in scrape box right here. And so we'll just hit that real quick and export that as a text file and we'll call it from Google and I can go in here to the link extractor and I can pull that in and then just do internal links turn this down a little bit here so I don't hammer the site and I'm still back up to my 120 ish number there but um, so you can see, and like we don't want all this stuff um, that's linked to inside of like plugin folders and stuff like that. So, you know, you can go through and you can remove that if you want. Or, I mean, Google can index it. They'll find it anyways. It doesn't matter. So you could put it in a sitemap. But um, so you can do that, remove that if you want. But you can start and use the link extractor without ever going to Google. Or you could just get a real rough idea of the bulk of your links, uh, which come straight from Google and export that. Um, if I wanted to bring in my uh, my ones from the link extractor there, I'd import these and add them back and go, I think it was round two and it had like 122 links. So I'll export that as HTML and we're just going to call it because I don't want to overwrite the other one, sitemap one. And then I can just take that, uh, that sitemap file and um, just upload that directly to a um, my web server 
and I went ahead and opened up the file so you could see it. It's just a HTML file with a list of URLs and Google can crawl through that and hit every single URL on your site and then they can index them all and then of course when the other search engines hit your site they'll be able to see the link to the sitemap as well and be able to get a direct link to all your sites. Another thing you could do while you're here is create an RSS feed if you don't have one. Uh, if you're using a content management system such as WordPress or whatever, uh, it probably creates an RSS feed for you. But if you're using a content management system that does not create an RSS feed or if you are manually you know, building your sites in something like Dreamweaver, then um, you can create an RSS feed. Just go to export and export as RSS XML list. Um, and then it needs to scan each page, so hit start scanning here, and it's going to read each page, and it's going to look at the title of the page, and it's going to give it a title on description. And so once that's all said and done, um, we'll be able to export that and save it. So I'm um, getting errors, obviously, on like images and stuff like that because you don't, you know, you don't really want that in an RSS feed. So it did the ones it was supposed to do. I'm going to export RSS XML and I can just save this as feed. And this is a properly formatted RSS XML feed. And again, I can go right into my folder here and I could take this feed and just upload that to my site and link to it and I would have an RSS feed. And then um, you have an official RSS feed and you can um, utilize that for promotion and you have a actual sitemap and Google can crawl them both as well as the other search engines. And that is a couple of ways you can use Scrapebox for White Hat just with basic export of URLs and formatting. Mm -hmm.